Hi, I have been asked to talk about books and references for the kind of material that I have been covering. So I am talking about the most commonly used books in geometric measure theory and give a little bit of insight as what they cover and um, what their particular styles are. So here are the list of books that I have. And first, the disclaimer that is so obvious that I'm not going to even um, mention that. So the, the first, of course, and the foremost is Feder's Geometric Measure Theory from um, 1969. And uh, this is a heavy book in both literally and uh, in the in the depth of material that it covers. Uh, but actually it's uh, divided into uh, two almost independent parts. So chapters two and three are concerned more with uh, Hausdorff measures, geometry of sets, area and area formula. And the rest of the book, chapters four and five, are dealing with the problem of minimal area and um, applications of the developed theory to calculus of variations, uh, theory of currents is treated and, uh, and whatnot. So this book is notoriously difficult to read um, also because of the particular um, style of writing, um, referencing to a previous sections where they also reference a previous one. So the statements read as under the assumptions of this section. And when you go to that section, then that section says under the assumptions of some other section. So it, it becomes very inconvenient to follow all of these. Um, but that is the book and, and it is, uh, I recall reading somewhere that in fact, the Theory is called Geometric Measure Theory because of the title of this book. Um, I Since I have covered area and query formulas, I will also specifically mention if a book um, covers them or not. And also I will mention if the book has exercises or not. In this case, it doesn't. So, page two. Um, also, I have some quotes from the prefaces of the books because the books themselves tell what they aim to do, so who better than the books themselves can describe their content. So um, particularly Federer's book is giving us an idea of where the theory was at when this book was being written. Um, let me quickly read some part of this. So during the last three decades, that will be uh, three decades before 1970, the subject of geometric measure theory has developed from a collection of isolated special results into a cohesive body of basic knowledge with an ample natural structure of its own and with strong ties to, other, to many other parts of mathematics. This book aims to fill the need for a comprehensive treatise on geometric measure theory. It contains a detailed exposition leading, the, leading from the foundations of the theory to the most recent discoveries, including many results not previously published. That also makes Federer's book especially important as a research reference book uh, because there are still questions there that could be investigated and lead to new research. And uh, yeah. The, then after Federer's book, there were several books which tried to basically uh, have a more user-friendly introduction to the subject. Um, for example, Simon's book, Lectures on Geometric Measure Theory, it's a nicely written book, um, first published in 1983, it's 272 pages. Um, so some parts, the beginning parts, focus on rectifiable sets, and then there is uh, varifolds and currents. It's very easy to read, there are no exercises, and it does cover avian query formulas. The preface says, central aim was to give the basic ideas of geometric measure theory in a style readily accessible to analysts. I have tried to keep the notes as brief as possible 
subject to the constraint of covering the really important and central ideas. Falconer's book, another respected book uh, from 1985, 150 pages. Uh, it focuses on the structure of sets and fractal sets. That means sets with a uh, host of dimension other than integer. It's very user friendly and uh, you don't need a ton of things to know to be to begin to read it. Uh, every chapter has some exercises. They are good ones and there are no solutions provided. So that's a challenge to pick up. Interestingly, the area and query formula are not even mentioned in that book. The preface says, self-contained account of the mathematics of sets of fractional and integral dimension. That means dimension is integer in this case. Pre uh, the, the thing I like about this is that the statements are super clean and clear. And uh, they say they work in RN, although many of the ideas apply equally to more general metric spaces. What, another thing I liked about this book is that when they don't cover a deeper result, they do give a quite brief description of what it is, and then they have clear references to where you can find that result. Uh, at this point, those may not be the uh, super updated um, places to find them, but, but um, uh, it could be a place to start. Okay, next we come to, to another beautiful book by uh, Matila. It's called Geometry of Sets and Measures in Euclidean Spaces, Fractals and Rectifiability. So as the title suggests, or if you, are, if you happen to know familiar with Matila's work, he comes from this chapter 2-3 of Feder's extensive book. Um, that means not concerned with the theory of currents and calculus of variations, but more with the structure of sets. So it focuses on the structure of sets and uh, it applies tools from harmonic analysis in doing so. It's about 340 pages, first published in 1986. And uh, so is it easy to read? I will say definitely yes, it's very well written. Uh, but that, but it goes a bit deeper than uh, Falconer's book, for example, and uh, so it's it, and it's also a longer book. So, are there exercises? Yes, there are some without solutions. What is uh, the book claiming to do? The main theme is the study of geometric structure of general Borel sets and Borel measures in RN. Um, okay. Next comes another uh, well-known book by Morgan. When I say well-known, I mean in the geometric measure theory circles. Um, so if you haven't yet started actually doing some serious studying in this, so don't worry if you haven't heard about these. It was first published in 1988. It's 220 pages and it covers currents and rectifiable sets. Uh, it's easy to read. There are pictures in this book, believe me or not, the pictures do help. Are there exercises? Uh, yes, each chapter contains some and uh, there are solutions at the end of the book. Uh, it, there's only a one paragraph uh, sketch of what area and query formulas are. The preface says it's an illustrated intro to geometric measure theory, basic ideas, terminology and results. The goal is to merely introduce the subject and make Federer's book more accessible. So it's a kind of, can be a first book in the topic that you read. Then comes a book from, uh, I guess, I'm not making a mistake, in 2008, uh, from Kranz and Parks. It's 350 pages. This focuses on the calculus of variations side of geometric measure theory, area minimizing currents. And uh, it also has pictures and it's also easy to read and there are no exercises. There is very detailed exposition of area and query formulas, so which I benefited from in my presenting these things on the channel. Uh, it includes some discussion of gram determinants and the proofs follow the original proofs of Federer's, which is also given in Evans and Gary's book is that I will mention next. The preface says, a text that introduces the graduate student to the key ideas in this subject. 
special effort is uh, made to keep it self-contained. So that makes it also a very uh, nice choice as a first read. If you are going to move in the direction of um, calculus of variations. Okay, the last two books uh, are not particularly books in geometric measure theory, but they have a good deal of intersection. Um, the, the book by Evans and Gary P is a book about Sobel functions and BV functions, um, more about these than geometric measure theory per se. There's no discussion of structure of sets, for example. However, um, it covers area formula and query formula, giving complete proofs using the, the proofs by Federer. It has no exercises and it's quite easy to read. It, it's a very efficiently written book. There are still gaps, um, not gaps. I mean, there are little exercises left with, uh, in, in the proofs, but um, at some point that is how you should be reading anything. So um, you cannot expect to read difficult proofs without thinking at all. And uh, that makes it a nice read, um, the right amount of challenge. And uh, yeah, I think it's about uh, maybe 450 pages. This was revised in 2015, but actually I liked the first edition in 1992. And the preface says, a source book documenting the rich structure of measure three on our end with particular emphasis on integration and differentiation. We pack into these notes all sorts of interesting topics that working mathemat mathematical analysts need to know. And they, I like the fact that they admit that this book is not definitely for beginners. We do offer lengthy, we do not offer lengthy heuristics or motivation. So you kind of need to know why a theorem is key or important, they don't provide that. They don't stop to say, uh, it's it, this theorem has important applications. You have to kind of know it from somewhere else. And it, it actually is a nice way of um, writing somehow. It's uh, very to the point. As a compensation, uh, they say that they have all the technicalities of the proofs, which I agree they do read a good deal of this book and I'm still reading it. Uh, and uh, Okay, the next book I want to mention uh, is this Geometric Inequalities. It was first published in Russian in 1980 and then uh, translated in 1988. It is 340 pages. I don't know what it focuses on. It's not a book about geometric measure theory, so I haven't read it. I don't know if it's easy to read. It doesn't have exercises, but the uh, the part I liked about this and why I'm including is this here is that there is a proof of the weak Sartre's theorem via covering argument. The the proof that is very different from uh, the one in Federer and Evans and Gary EP, and also in Kranz and Parks. Um, this proof uh, is what we presented for this weak Sartre theorem. And uh, then they use the C1 Luzin approximation that every Lipschitz map is almost C1 and the implicit function theorem to, to give a proof of the query formula. So that was the approach um, taken in this book and I adopted in my presentation of the query formula. So the preface is a substantial part of this book deals with isoparametric inequalities and a lot of, uh, there has been a good deal of applications of area formula in this book uh, to get these geometric inequalities that they claim. Okay, and last one is Topics on Analysis in Metric Spaces by Ambrosio and Tilly. Ambrosio has another book called Geometric Measure Theory and Real Analysis from 2015. That book covers a lot more uh, from geometric measure theory than this little book. It's only 130 pages, as you can see, but it's a very beautifully written book. It's super clean, the proofs are sharp. Um, 
the parts that are of interest to us is it studies Lipschitz curves and generally Lipschitz functions into arbitrary metric spaces. I will talk about this in, a, in an individual video where we talk about maps that go from Euclidean spaces into arbitrary metric spaces. And surprisingly, you can talk about derivatives, you can talk about area formula, and you can talk about query formula. A surprising and, and uh, amazing achievements of uh, theory in the since 1990s. It talks about geodesic problems uh, on a metric space, shortest curves. And the last chapter is on Sobolev spaces on metric spaces, a topic that is growing super fast and um, it's it's uh, it's a hot topic. Okay, it's as I said, very well written, easy to read. It has some nice exercises, and it only mentions area formula, no co-area formula. Okay, so um, hopefully this will get you started on uh, where to begin with. Um, if you have any questions about a particular book, please put them in the comments. If you have a book that you definitely think had to be in this list, uh, again, put that in the comment and maybe give a little bit of description of uh, what it is about. Then I probably in the future can make a second video on these based on your comments. And uh, generally, let me know what you think. Um, with that, I let you go for today. Thank you a lot. Please subscribe if you have not, if you forget to subscribe and I forget to make uh, more videos, then you may miss me forever. And that's what I don't want to happen. There may be a small uh, pause in uh, new videos. Um, no, I'm not joining Revenge Body. Uh, I'm just uh, preparing some other material to present on the channel, but um, keep um, watching maybe some previous videos that you have not yet, but you wish you had. And uh, that's it. Thank you a lot today for watching.